Hey guys, uh, this is Isaiah with This Week in Congress. Um, coming back guys with the coverage of what's going on in Congress this week. Um, we've got an interesting one this week, so let me get started. Um, so Congress is a short week ahead. Actually, the House doesn't start till Wednesday, and the Senate is also dealing with confirmations um, and other sorts of things. So um, some of the big things to just touch over real quick is that there is a bipartisan opioid crisis response bill that's being pushed forward right now and that should get a vote in the senate this week and also a bill that would delay the obamacare's um, employer mandate um that will be up for a vote in the house this week as well so we should stay tuned for those two things those are super big but the interesting thing i thought not that those are interesting but i think those things will get a lot of coverage the interesting thing that i thought probably won't get a lot of coverage was that the House, which is starting Wednesday, is covering about 21 bills this week. It's a lot. Including legislation to prohibit the slaughter of dogs and cats for human consumption. Interesting. So, um, the first bill is H.R. 6720. This is the Dog and Cat Meat Trade Prohibition Act of 2018. This legislation would prohibit the slaughter of dogs and cats for human consumption and the trade of dogs and cats meat under the penalty of a fine of up to $5,000 for each violation. So already state and local governments will still be able to enact their own animal welfare laws and regula regulations as many already have. And the exception of this rule would be for um, tribal Indian tribal religious ceremonies apparently. The people who introduced this bill, Representative Vern Buchanan of Florida, a Republican, and Al Alcy Hastings, also of Florida, and that's a Democrat, so bipartisan introduction. Um, they pushed this bill and have released this statement that while the slaughter of dogs and cats for consumption is not commonplace in the United States, it is not explicitly prohibited under federal law. Unbelievably, it is still legal to slaughter dogs and cats for the purpose of human consumption in 44 states across the country. This is important legislation and it will pro prohibit the slaughter and trade of dogs and cats for human consumption and provide penalties to ensure that individuals involved in the dog or cat meat trade are held accountable. Dogs and cats play a vital role in the collective experience of Americans and deserve protection and compassion. That's the statement from the two bipartisan co-sponsors. And this legislation has already had a lot of bipartisan support from numerous co-sponsors from both sides of the aisle. The issues, um, I think, really, if you think about it, originally gained a lot of attention with this specifically um, after many videos of the Yulin Festival in China where thousands of cats and dogs were like publicly killed, skinned, even and um, put in the, in the market and like caged essentially, um, which made this pick up a lot of steam. Um, the Humane Society obviously supports this legislation um, completely, and what they've said was that 30 million dogs and untold numbers of cats are subjected to brutal dog and cat meat industries globally every year. They've also said that this bill will build um, on bans already in place in states California, Georgia, Hawaii, Michigan, New York, and Virginia as well. Um, and they already have prohibitions on the cruel practices, but they think that this bill will push further the prohibitions in um, Asian countries, including Taiwan, Thailand, Hong Kong, and the Philippines. This legislation will prevent the appalling trade from taking hold in the U.S. and strengthening our hand to seek to end it worldwide. That's from the Humane Association. So obviously they have a stake in this and many activist organizations um, in this area have kind of said the same thing and many people are saying the same thing to support it. And they want people to take action by supporting this bill. There's one more bill called the House Resolution 401. Now, this bill is urging China, South Korea, Vietnam, Thailand, the Philippines, Indonesia, Cambodia, Laos, India, and all nations to outlaw the dog and cat meat trade to enforce existing laws against trade um, currently. 
So more specifically, this calls for an end to dog and cat meat industries worldwide urges the governments in those countries to one, adopt and enforce laws banning the dog and cat meat trade and two, increase efforts to prevent leather or any fur byproducts of trade from entering international markets. It also asks them to crack down on food and safety, food safe and safety laws um, that prohibit the sale of cat or dog meat internationally. So this kind of affirms this idea that Congress actually had introduced last year to ask the rest of the world to, hey, we don't support the sale and the consumption of cat and dog meat, so we're asking you not to as well, and we want you to respect that. And it's kind of what's coming through in this even more um, with this last piece of legislation that I talked about. Now, obviously, this is something that can gain like broad support because the torture of these animals and if you've ever seen these videos it's mm. really really uh sad to see and it's it's not it's not something that's easy to be against i, I don't think though i'm sure someone can comment and find a way to but i do think that i find the argument made just in these bills to be a bit hypocritical and i'm going to tell you why this is my personal belief um, I've paid attention a lot to this Dr. Uh, Melanie Joy, who's, I believe, a PhD in psychology. She's talked about the idea of carnism, and what that is, is uh, carnism, um, as per the website, is the invisible belief system or ideology that conditions people to eat certain animals. Carnism is essentially the opposite of veganism, as carn means flesh, um, or of the flesh, and ism refers to the, a belief system of sorts. So, um, she argues that because carnism is invisible, people rarely realize that eating animals is a choice rather than a given. In meat-eating cultures around the world, people typically don't think about why they eat certain animals but not others, or why they eat animals at all. And But when eating animals is not necessary, which is the case for many people in the world today, she argues that um, this is a choice, and choices always stem from beliefs. So, I do find this argument to be, to hold a lot of value, especially in having this conversation, because in this paradigm, it becomes okay to form our ethics around what animals we historically and find socially acceptable to eat, and which ones can't be eaten. And this is evident with different cultures' treatment of animals around the world, and it being so various. So... There's no real consistency in thought when differentiating the difference between a sacred animal and a scrumptious one that I found in the United States. There definitely isn't, and if you look in other places, um, cows are sacred animals that should never be eaten. And we would look at that as ridiculous. So this conflict there and this idea that's not even kind of like questioning, well, wait, why aren't those animals okay to eat? And I'm personally, obviously, I hate the torture of animals as well, and I can't say that I am a vegan, but I do think that the arguments to call for the unnecessary slaughter of animals is important, and also challenging our own ethics when meat eating, because I think it's definitely worth um, thinking about, not just lightly, just passing over. So, um, tell, me guys, tell me what you guys think, I really would like to know. Um, I find this to be pretty interesting, and um, I hope you did too. So, thanks, that's this week for in Congress, and the bills I mentioned earlier will definitely be worth thinking about. Maybe we can talk about them. Please comment in below and talk about, you know, how you feel about this legislation, and tell me, you know, what else you guys want to want us to talk about. There's tons of, like, real interesting legislation out there right now, and a lot of ones that are going under the radar, so help us stay in the know, and we'll also keep covering legislation for you. So thanks, and if you guys support and love our content, please subscribe, like the video, and also um, we're going to post a link to our Patreon if you'd like to help us keep making more videos, which we love to do, and also other content, you can support us. So thanks guys, and that's it with This Week in Congress. I'm Isaiah Thompson, and have a good week. Thank you, Eric, and thanks for supporting us. Please comment below. Eric, tell us what you'd like to talk about and what kind of legislation you're interested in because, you know, it's, it's, it's good to go find interesting things, but I love it when we can 
talk about videos that you guys actually want to want to hear about when it comes to legislation and 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 even politics and that's fine too so i mean also if you have any questions you can throw it on there right now and i'll try and answer it and stick around for a couple more minutes but otherwise that's all i've got for this week so thanks a lot and yeah we'll be in the comment section